All right, welcome to another episode from the Chart Reader. So I am doing my more expanded view of the weed sector. I'm looking at two, four, six, seven stocks on this one, all right? Tilray, we're gonna be talking earnings aftermath. We're gonna be talking about losing moving averages. But what I'm actually gonna start with is volume. I think there's some interesting things to be to be said about the volume down here. And look, end of the day, you know I pride myself on not being a fanboy, all right? I'm not here to say things are good when they're really not, because I'm telling you, I get way more views when I just say good stuff versus bad stuff, okay? But, you know, as bad as the last four days have been, there's some interesting things that, that are really catching my eye down there, okay? From there, CGC actually had an offering on my last video and I didn't know that again i'm so so grateful for all the info you guys give me in the comments right you girls as well so um that's something i'll talk about that i did it on the last video and then you know overall i like the fact that the tilray reaction seems to be not touching a lot of the other stocks high tide going back over the moving averages yo oh gee i did the job i made a video last week i think it was around the fifth give or take i think it was last friday was that not the fifth yeah the fifth OGI was close. OGI did the job, right? So love to talk about that. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I think, I think, yeah, you know, again, I'm trying to like say my thoughts as unbiased as I can, right? But I am still bullish on 24 because I do believe the elections are going to help. I do, you know, and, and hopefully this is just a bad start, bad moment. Nonetheless, you know, we'll see what this goes and does, right? But before I give you more of my thoughts and opinions, what are we going to do today? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. Well, we have our five moving averages. There are horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. And then when we are done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can please subscribe to this channel, share this video online with your friends, comment good or bad if you disagree. I'm telling you, anything you can do helps me so, so much with these YouTube algorithms, especially if you can actually share the video. I am not the best and it's just a little click on your end. So look, let's talk about Tilray, okay? I'm, I'm gonna start with the bad, right? I, I, I think it's really important to not pretend that these last couple days were bad, but truth be told, I actually thought this was gonna go a little bit worse, all right? Now, don't get me wrong, if you watch my last video, I said I didn't think we were gonna come back to this low, but I thought we'd be a little closer to the, the 177 line th than we are. So that right there is what made me look at volume. And like I said, I'm gonna compare all this green to this little red. But first off, let's talk about the last couple days again. So my big, big thing that I said on the last video before earnings was, look, technically this thing was doing amazing. Earnings is his own little thing. And I've seen crazy things make it go up. I've seen crazy things make it go down. There's a reply I'm going to get to. You can see I'm a little behind. I try to make that number a zero, but I have, I have at least six things I haven't um, replied to. Someone commented, and I know I saw it on my phone. I didn't see the whole comment, but someone agreed with my EPS comment. Look, I am not a bookmaker. The person said the person the person said that he was a bookmaker. Look, I'm not an accountant. I am not a fine. I didn't even take finance classes when I was in college. All right, like I am. I am like the last person. Like believe me when I say that. Right. EPS earnings per share. I have seen great guidance. And if you watch my videos, you know, I, I'm very much a strong believer that good guidance is the best thing a, mark, a, a, a stock can give us. No one cares about today. Everyone wants to believe tomorrow is going to be the amazing day for any stock, right? I have seen good, good, good guidance do nothing on a very, very slight miss of earnings per share. It's crazy. Earnings per share, EPS, it's generally one little bullet in a giant summary of the finances. They don't even put it on the top unless they, they like crush the number, but EPS, 
looks like this one random little blip in the thing, that is generally what makes this a bad red or a good green. Again, not 100% every time, but it's crazy what those three little letters, blah, 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 those three little letters will do. You know what I mean? So um, again, I thought the overall earnings were, were not that bad, right? But EPS was my theory. We get a loss of one, two, three, four, four moving averages on a single candle, it makes sense to me that we're also gonna go below the, the fifth one as well, right? So yeah, we're below all five, but what's catching my eye is volume, all right? And there's a couple things that are catching my eyes. First, immediately, the buying actually decreased. Generally speaking, the aftermath brings more and more and more selling, selling, selling. This down is actually generally an up. All right, now, it's a long weekend as well. Monday is, is closed because of Martin Luther King Day, all right? Generally, a longer weekend makes more people sell. Again, that didn't happen here. I find that a little odd, I'll be honest. And in a lot of ways, that's a good thing, right? Like the dump off didn't go crazy. The earnings reaction aftermath that I was talking about, yeah, it wasn't good, right? Like we were up in the twos, we're now sitting in the buck 80s, like that's not good, no one wants that. But it could have been so much worse, all right? The other thing that really caught my, look, you will never, ever, ever really hear me say, I think this is the bottom, I think this is the top. Like, those words will lose you way more money than they will make you, all right? Believe me when I say that, all right? Um, a lot of people are calling that the bottom, this 151 line, and again, you can see it as I zoom out, that seemingly is the bottom right now, right? I like the fact that the escalation, the takeoff, whatever you want to call it, the move from what is actually the bottom right now, because we haven't been any lower than it, right? This takeoff had a lot of buying. Let me just zoom in, all right? Big green, big green, giant green, bunch of big greens, all right? This sell-off doesn't even come remotely close to all this, all right? And look, if I had to guess, all this, this day alone, let me just click into it, look in the volume right there, this day alone was 125 million shares, all right? The average right now especially is even lower, is only 13, like even up here was 24, right? Like this single monster buy day on top of this one, this one, right? Like the highest sell looks like it was this one, and it was 60 million, right? So six, 12, let's even just call this six, 18, that 180 right there, that's just over this 125. And then we have another one right here that was 90. Like there looks to be more people still holding than selling. That's, that's at least, and again, to me, I would have expected just a little bit more here than here if the reaction was gonna be bad, I think that does make me believe this should hold and hopefully we're not talking about going down here or lower. Now look, don't get me wrong, MACD looks like it's about to go into the negative. RSI, we've seen, hmm, it's been a while. Get out of here. Whoa, get out of here. All right, the last time we had a super low RSI in the single digits was late 22, all right? Since then, I think it's fair to say we've, what are you at? Let me just draw you right there. Yeah, I think that's maybe a fair, no, now don't get me wrong, a 43 is where our RSI is right now, right? A drop to 21 would not be good and that actually could bring us as low as maybe that line at like 172 maybe. I'm taking a look at this late December, uh, late, sorry, late October candle here. Maybe 172 goes, but I don't, th like, like that basically means we slipped just a little below this resistance, but we did that back here in November as well. And, and you can see what happened after, right? So I, I, I think this is gonna hold. I don't know why I do. And I, think, I, I shouldn't say I don't know why I do. I think a lot of it is this volume theory that I got. So, um, I'm going to keep this line there. I don't think it's going to hurt anyone to, to move that. But again, 
MACD looks like it is about to go into the negative. I'm just kind of zooming out to see, you know. Yeah, look, it's been a while since we, I'm zooming out hard, right? I'm not, I'm gonna delete this line. I don't think this MACD line, again, it doesn't really hurt anyone. Maybe I'll keep it, we'll see what happens. It's been a while since we've actually like significantly been under it. Like I'm now looking in like early 2022. Um, oh man. Yeah, we kind of live at this like not that low. I, I, I like it. I think they both slip a little lower, both being the MACD and the RSI. I think that makes me believe we're going to like oscillate around this 177 line just like we did in that late October through December stretch. Um, what's really now going to be important is, look, I was liking Tilray because I was hunting break all five and fly. I know it's a pretty little rhyme, right? And it's fun to say, but it, it's it's real in my eyes. I'm telling you, right? Like I wouldn't be saying it if I didn't believe it, all right? Um, I was hunting the break all and fly. It, it, it couldn't do it here, but we've tested it once. We've tested it twice. We tried it again right here. We tested it three times. We kind of even tried it again a fourth time. It's been a long, long, long time now, zooming out and talking about July of 2021. It's been a long, long time since we've been under that 200 moving average line. The last time we were long, <clears throat> excuse me, long, long, long below the 200 before the good break, like I said, was that election year. End of 2022, around October, November, December, that's when things happen, right? I am... I am believing that history repeats itself. Again, do I think we're gonna make this super silly monster run? I don't think so. I, I, I'm not here pretending that we're gonna do that same crazy, because again, if you actually look at it, the low, come on baby, don't do that. The low in 2020, roughly speaking, was $2. I'm looking at the green line on the top, $2.50 rounding. The high coming into 2021 was, I mean, just after it, like you get what I'm saying. It went from $2 to $60 in the span of an election year, all right, give or take. It went a little into 2021, uh, January. I don't think we're gonna do a two to 60, 30X move, all right? But hey, I'll take something like half of that, a little less than half of that, you get what I'm saying, right? So I don't need to repeat history. Give me a little bit of a fraction of that history and yeah, there'll be plenty to take to the bank, all right? The important things to me really, really are, I'm gonna draw this line, 163, okay? We do not, I, I, I actually drew the line at 164. You know I'm not here for perfection, 164 is good enough. We do not want to go below 164 until rate. $1.64, if we lose that, I no longer think 151 is going to hold and I got to start worrying about all time lows. In my opinion, we oscillate around that 177, 170, maybe the low 160s, hopefully never below that 164. And hopefully we, we go from there again. All right. And just looking at that line I drew, we've actually taken off from it already twice. You can see we did that in July. You can see we did that in November, right? So... Um, maybe that 164 is an interesting line. Um, again, I'm not here saying bottoms, this and that. I think that's nothing more than a, a goal to get more views. Believe me when I say that, all right? I could easily play that game. But yeah, I don't think we're going to go to 151 as long as 164 holds, all right? Um, the money line before I ever think about going big back up, right? Because you know, if you were watching my videos, I had $4 dreams, right? I can't pretend I didn't. Um, even down here, I did, all right? Like, I don't think you can think about 250 or anything until this $2.15 breaks. $2.15 has, you can see it, I'm gonna click in it one more time, the 20 moving average, the 100 moving average, and the, and the 200 moving average. The 20, the 100, and the 200 are all literally at $2.15. And give or take, all three of them are going pretty horizontal. Maybe the 20 will slip and start to go, come down, but it's gonna take a while for that 100 and 200 to like start coming down as well. So that's gonna be a really, really strong horizontal line for a bit. If we get over that, I'm back to super bullish, all right? Um, I don't think I got too many more thoughts here. 
I think that's a good analysis of the daily. Again, obviously, if we're under all the moving averages on the daily, you got to expect we're going to be under all of them on the weekly, right? Excuse me. I think there's reason to believe that this might try to come back up to $2.04. This was a pretty big extreme single red candle on the weekly. Maybe we try to recover maybe a little less than I would love to close by next Friday at 211. I would. The problem is it's a four day week, right? Like I said, Monday's closed. So, hey, maybe we make an attempt to 204. Otherwise, yeah, I even think 173 might be able to hold this and we never even get to that 164 line. So, yeah, I still think we're going to go down just a little bit more. I don't think we're going to go down too far. And, and really, I think that thought's going to start to echo as we start to look at other weed stocks. And, and, and you can see the confidence is still actually there in, in a number of them. All right. So, um, hey, I didn't get as many earning thoughts as I was hoping for. I'll ask it one more time. Let me know what you thought of the earnings. I really didn't look at much. The only thing I know, and I echoed again, was earnings per share was missed. I don't know if it was missed by a lot. I don't know if it was missed by a single penny by a single percent. I don't know if they missed it by a fraction of a percent. They missed earnings per share. And I believe that single little, what seems like insignificant bullet is what took us from 250 down to buck 90. I'm not here to say it's justified. I'm not here to say it's real. I'm really grateful for that bookmaker comment. I will comment on that after this, but yeah, it's just something I've learned as an uneducated finance person myself, right? Like it, it, it is what it is. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Otherwise, let's get into CGC. Okay, I've been talking about this 455 line for so, so long long. All right. Something happened on the last video. I actually don't remember when I made my last video. Give me a second. I'm going to pause this. I didn't, I didn't, I like, let me see if I can show those and my like real name doesn't pop up. Give me a second. Okay, cool. Let's do this. So I made the last CGC video on this day on, on the ninth. Okay. On that day, there was an offering. Okay. And sorry, that's the discord. And, um, couple of just general comments on offerings, okay? I personally don't mind offerings. I should have probably said that a little bit better. Like offerings are not bad in my opinion, all right? An offering is a way for the company to actually bank some money and bring dollars into the company. Knock on wood, they use the money well, not just stuff the executive pockets with bonuses and this and that, right? But theoretically, an offering is a good thing for, for a stock longer term. The market reaction to an offering is generally not positive, all right? And lo and behold, it actually hasn't been crazy negative, right? So like you can kind of see it. I don't think the market really cared much about the offering is kind of what I'm seeing. Like they're still just, in my opinion, wondering what's going to happen here. Are we going to lose this 455 line and potentially fall into all time lows? Or are we going to maybe kind of try to make our way back up, right? I have been sitting here saying, I don't think we're going up. I think we're going down. All right. I have been saying that for a couple videos for two main reasons. Number one, I do not like a reverse split. I don't care if it's one for 10, one for a hundred, one for two. Reverse split is bad. Okay, and, and I generally speaking, I do believe it just doesn't help a stock, right? The other thing I talked about was this 455 line, all right? What was a really hard, and especially right here, I kind of been talking, focusing on this one. Stops it once, stops it twice, stops it three times, stops it four times, fifth time takes off. We've now saved us once, saved us twice. We've now slipped under it. So you can kind of call this the third time if we're going to come back up, but like, I'm never one to believe if it was four here, take off on five, it's going to be four here and then lose it on five. It's not one to one. All right. It generally isn't. And I'm worried we're starting to ask too much of this line. We've, 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 we, psh, I just, the support can only hold so much. Just think of a, think of an athlete, right? Like the best, like heavy lift. Oh my God. How unathletic do I say? A weightlifter, right? An Olympic level weightlifter. 
dude, for sure that guy can bench press more than me. We're talking 400, 500s, right? But hey, after a while, he's gonna get tired, right? And can't bench press anymore. And 455 can only do so much. It could only stop it so many times before it couldn't anymore. It can only hold it so many times. And, and, and I'm just worried on this 455 line, on top of this reverse split, on top of an offering, which again, in my opinion, generally gets bad reactions initially. So CGC, still under the lines. Volume ain't looking good. Um, yeah, I see the RSI peaking up, but again, there's a there's a theory I have with that where it gets really low. This isn't the best of examples, but it's a thing I've seen. It get it being the RSI RSI gets really low. So let's let's look at it like this. What generally happens is the RSI gets too high. You need it to cool off. Hopefully, it can make another run again. Hopefully, it cools off. Hopefully, it makes another run again. What ends up happening sometimes is sometimes it gets really low, needs to come back up just before it goes really low, just to come back up before it goes really low. I believe that's what's about to start to happen here. And again, I'm not here spreading fear. I'm not here telling. I've never used the words you should buy, you should sell, right? But I need CGC to give me a little bit more reason to believe, and I don't think it's been doing that just yet. So um, I am ignoring this RSI going up. I am, all right? I'm still seeing bad volume under all the MAs on the daily, obviously under all the MAs on the weekly with the purple one up there, right? Like, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to, and look, on the weekly, we've now, it's only a couple cents, but we're now under that on the weekly. It just, it seems like we're gonna start heading towards 405. Hey, maybe, maybe 405 is stronger than I'm willing to let it seem like, right? I could be, I've been saying, if we lose 455, I think the loss will be too bad for the 405 to hold and it'll just keep going. Hey, maybe it'll hold us a little bit. Maybe it'll give us enough time to recover. Like maybe I'm not giving the 405 line any credit when I should be, but yeah, I am still holding the belief that the 405 line is the one that matters. If we lose this, that's not gonna stop the train from going down the all-time all -time lows black hole, all right? Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. I am not here to hate on your thoughts. I would love a good, solid disagreement. Believe me. Damn, this is 22 minutes. Okay, I will make the other on another video. I don't want to make this crazy long. My apologies. Hey, thank you so, so much. More to come.